If you know me and have followed this channel over the last couple of years, you'll know that one of my favorite apps to use on the iPad with Apple Pencil is a digital note-taking app called GoodNotes. I remember discovering it in my first year of university and I was blown away by the creativity and capability it unlocked in the realm of note-taking. And it was like something just clicked in me when I got my hands on this tool. And it went so far that I even made a handwritten textbook out of iPad notes for one of my physiology subjects that year. And since starting my YouTube channel, I've been an incredible advocate for the app and I've recommended it to students around the world. You know, I've also made videos expressing my feedback regarding areas of improvement. And I've been impressed to see good notes not only listen to that feedback, but respond to that feedback and communicate what they've been doing with it. And I had quite the experience at the start of this year going from a student who used the GoodNotes app to getting the opportunity to visit the GoodNotes head office in London and see some of the faces behind the brand. And most excitingly, I had the chance to have a conversation with GoodNotes CEO, Stephen, who actually was an international student from Hong Kong studying in Australia when he created the original GoodNotes app. And I was very keen to hear from him what the origin story of the GoodNotes app was and give you guys a chance to hear that story too. And you know, I think what surprised me about Stephen was how down to earth and humble he was as a CEO, which you know has really expanded my view of what a CEO could be um, and is actually quite inspiring the more that I think about it. But without further ado, I'll let you guys listen to the conversation for yourself. Stephen, for the people out there who may not know who you are and what you do, could you give me a, a really brief introduction? Sure. Um, I'm a founder and CEO of an app called GoodNooks. So GoodNooks basically help you go paperless. So the reason I started GoodNooks was um, when I was in uni studying and I got my iPad on the very, very first day. And then I got so many like paper notebooks around me for my studies. And then I kind of want to go paperless. And then I saw iPad as a perfect size for doing that. So uh, if you um, use an iPad right now and then use an Apple Pencil, then um, maybe you're thinking about how can you get rid of all your pen and paper. So mm -hmm. GoodNooks allows you to do that. You know, when I was reading up on your story, I found out that you, know, you were a student studying in Australia when you created the first GoodNotes app. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about that story um, and where did the idea for Good Notes originate and what was that like? When I was like 11 years old, I was given a laptop as a birthday gift from my father and that's how I got into programming. So I was of course like playing games like other kids, but I quickly um, got very interested in programming because it's kind of a way for you to express your ideas and then the nice thing about it is you can give it to someone else to um, play with their program so it was very satisfying so I got to uni um, and then I at the time I was also um, reading a lot about like startups and then I really wanted to start my own companies uh, I was in my last year of my studies um, I was studying math because I got interested in math and then mm -hmm. Um, but I realized my real passion is programming. Mm -hmm. But I was really worried because I was worried that if I graduate, uh, I wouldn't be able to get a job with mm -hmm. my math degree. I basically spent my last semester working on GNUX for the for full time, and I used all my elect elective to uh, quotas, and I signed up all the first year programming courses. Uh, and then I skipped all the lectures. Mm -hmm. I was working on Unix for, for full time for the whole semester. It was mainly solving my own problem uh, of uh, going paperless. And I was just trying to earn some money uh, so that I don't have to find a job immediately when I graduate. Mm -hmm. And I can uh, use that money to fund my, fund my startup. Uh, I stick a motto uh, on, the, on the wall to remind me to work hard every day. And then I really didn't expect that uh, people like Guido so much. They keep writing emails for like requesting features, for uh, fixing issues they find in the app. So and then that's how I kept working on Guido ever since I graduated, mm -hmm. like more than th 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember when I was reading up on it, the first five years 
of good notes. Yeah. It was just you. Yeah. What was the moment where it went from just you to what I see now, which is an organization of over 200 people? What was that moment? Yeah, the moment was uh, when Apple announced Apple Pencil. Because before that, I wrote emails to Apple saying that, oh, you should release the stylus, even though maybe Steve Jobs uh, famously said that, oh, he doesn't believe in uh, stylus. But I wrote an email, I don't know whether that make any difference. But uh, I was so happy when Apple announced Apple Pencil. Because before that, uh, it was just myself. The reason I didn't hire anyone was I wasn't sure how long the business can sustain. Because it, it's more like a niche product for people who want to use handwriting on a tablet form factor. But after Apple Pencil, people were looking for um, an app for them to get rid of their paper documents, paper notebooks. And that's also when the company started growing. So it was at that point that um, I started looking for engineers to help uh, build the product. Because I got so many ideas how we can kind of reimagine pen and paper. Because with digital, there's so many possibilities. So uh, one example was uh, I took inspiration from Photoshop to bring the Lasso tool to Gunux. So in real pen and paper, it's very difficult to make changes. It's very difficult to um, erase something. I always just like tear the page out and then throw it on the floor. So that's why when I was studying on the floor, it's all the like papers where I made mistakes. Mm -hmm. So but with digital, it's so easy. You just use the Lasso tool to circle something. You can move it around, you can erase it, you can change color. This is so um, convenient. So, um, and then the company started growing and then we um, kept, hire, uh, kept hiring more and more people. And I wouldn't expect at all that uh, we will be uh, more than 200 people now. It is honestly a remarkable thing to be in the office this week and sort of see what, what this has turned into. Yeah. Um, I agree with what you said about the lasso tool. That was without a doubt the tool that sold it for me when I was using it as a student. Um, you know, I I look at what Good Notes has enabled me to do as a student. Hmm. I can take my lecture notes, my personal notes. I can fit like 200 page textbooks, all of which would have like filled up a backpack. But now it all fits an iPad. Yeah. And so I sort of see how it progresses us towards a paperless future, and yeah. I think that's amazing. Uh, but beyond just being paperless, what do you see the impact of having these tools in the world of learning being? What do you see GoodNotes' contribution to changing education being? We have so many students using GoodNotes every single day. I'm always surprised how much they use GoodNotes, how much time they spend on GoodNotes. So that's also, uh, that was a couple of years back. That's also when we started like, focusing more on education. So instead of just building the best pen and paper replacement, we also think about how can we make study more efficient, more enjoyable. With, especially with um, technologies nowadays, with AI, there's so much that the technology can help you to like, being able to like, uh, find out what you may be missing in terms of like, knowledge uh, and then guiding you through that mm -hmm. learning journey. But also when we think about classes, by teaching in general, how can we equip teachers, students, so that they can get insights faster, they can acquire knowledge faster. So for example, uh, if you uh, need to memorize something, you, we can use an algorithm called like, space mm -hmm. repetition to really like probably the most efficient way to help you memorize something. So I think through technology, um, everyone will be able to um, learn faster and then also making the process uh, more enjoyable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's this really interesting quote that I once read, and it, it was, I think it was from Steve Jobs, and he was talking about how, I think he was comparing the way um, human beings right. were able to convert, I think, energy into kinetic energy, and as a result, into movement. Okay. So we're sort of looking at the efficiency of energy conversion. and. A list was made and there were all these animals and at the top I think there was a particular bird but all the way down towards the bottom of the list was human beings and we were quite inefficient in converting energy into kinetic energy but the moment you give the human being a bicycle 
the human being riding the bicycle goes to the top of the list. And he was trying to make the point about how we as humans are tool building creatures and how these tools that we build or the technology that we build is an amplification of who we are and what we do. And I look at, you know, word processes and how word processes allow us to, you know, write down our thoughts and then edit them. Uh, an Excel spreadsheet allows you to take numbers and process them beyond what one human mind is capable of doing, so it amplifies that thinking. And I can say, for me as a student, um, there is something very unique that a tool like GoodNotes amplifies. And for, for me, it's the non-linear creative thinking that normally isn't accessible. And so, um, with that in mind, when you come across students or people in the world who've taken your app and done remarkable things with them, like how does that make you feel? I, I think that's the really satisfying part. I think that's the whole reason I kept working on GNUs for so long. So I think it's especially tough for the first five years when it was just myself, like working on everything, mostly coding, mostly customer support, like replying emails, and then very little marketing. So the, the reason I kept going was because how many people rely on GNUX for their study, for their work, and then how much they love GNUX. I was just really surprised when I see people making really beautiful notes on GNOX much better than I could do. So I, I think that's what kept me going, what um, pushed me to keep improving GNOX, what kept me like, uh, f like keep growing the company, keep trying to think how can we can we imagine pen and paper, really think about how can we make the life easier for other people. So I, I think that satisfaction is kind of very addictive. So in my first year of university, um, I remember discovering this and there's this moment where I remember using it for the first time. A tool mm. like this awakened a part of me that was inherently creative and I was just obsessed with learning. Um, mm. At that particular point in my life, I realized I didn't know how to learn. Um, and, and so I was trying out new things and it, and it just so happened to me that I discovered the iPad and GoodNotes at that time. And um, I was so obsessed that I even made a YouTube video on this, but I made a physiology textbook out wow. of my iPad notes. And so I just wanted to show it to you and sort of see your reaction to it. <laughs> this is really amazing. Uh, I just saw it to the camera. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the reason I kept working on GNUs for so long. Like seeing how other people create so many beautiful notes. It's, incredible it's really fantastic yeah um I, I don't know what to say it's just very beautiful um that's the reason uh, we work on GNUX for so long a question that i'd love to ask you and a, a little over a year ago i made a video which was a letter to good notes and it was a video that i made firstly to appreciate what the brand and the app has meant to me when i was right. a student but secondly, to give one piece of feedback that was really important to me at the time, but also was important to some of my audience as well. And, and that was feedback about the pen in GoodNotes 5 mm. at the time. Mm. And so this entire physiology note textbook was written using GoodNotes 4. Yeah. And I still remember using the GoodNotes 4 fountain pen. It was the most incredible thing ever. Yeah. But between GoodNotes 4 and GoodNotes as it is now, something changed. And so I want to just give you a quick explanation <laughs> okay. of what that is. The thing that I've noticed between GoodNotes 4 and GoodNotes 6 is the velocity, the speed with which you write now using the fountain pen impacts the way the ink writes on the digital paper. So in GoodNotes 6 when I write, for example, the word hello, you can see how the speed leads to certain parts of the writing being thicker and other parts being thinner. While in GoodNotes 4 using the fountain pen, no matter how fast you were, there was a level of consistency. and while this is more realistic to what a fountain pen is, I, I feel like this gives off a more consistent, more aesthetic looking version of my handwriting. And so my question is, is the GoodNotes 4 fountain pen possible to be replicated in GoodNotes 6 potentially in the future? Yes, definitely. So one thing we actually tried doing in GoodNotes 5, so um, in GoodNotes 5, the fountain pen is actually different compared to GoodNotes um, 4. Um, so one thing we did was 
adding that speed information in calculating what's the width of the stroke. Mm -hmm. So to some people, it may be more um, aesthetically pleasing. For some people, it could be annoying. So I think we can definitely um, add an option um, to replicate what you're seeing in GNU4 in GNU6. I would definitely um, consider uh, this future improvement. Okay. But thanks so much for sharing that feedback. Thank you so much. I love the Good Notes for Fountain Pen so much that I prefer it over real pen and paper. Like wow. it was that incredible to me. So I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> what do you see as the future for Good Notes? What, how is your vision evolving? Yeah, our, our vision is really um, to become the most compelling productivity platform for everyone. So we are starting with note taking but we are really thinking about how can we use technology to help people uh, work and study more efficiently, more enjoyable. So going forward, um, we're going to be expanding in terms, of our, in terms of our input method. So we are starting with stylus. We have been really focused on stylus, but we are also expanding to keyboard typing, for example, audio recording. So we're trying to kind of become the most flexible canvas for like, um, capturing your ideas. Like collaborating with people and then uh, leveraging technology to help you like get to the end result faster or even creating a better uh, end product. Mm -hmm. So I think that's our vision uh, in the next five to ten years. Mm -hmm. As I said, it is a remarkable story um, that a student who was just in university came up with an app that solved a problem maybe they had for themselves but it's gone on to impact people around the world. And now you're a CEO. And so I'd love to know, like, what, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned over the last couple of years? Yeah, I think the biggest lesson is um, trying to help people, help people save time, help people solve their problems. And then when you try to do the best work, people will try to will want to help you even for free, even, even without any money. And you just, I personally really enjoy the process. So when you try to really create the best product, try to do your best work, then you, you see that um, many people try to help you, want to kind of support you. And then it's just really satisfying. And then also seeing a product that uh, is being used by so many people. So I think my biggest lesson is always try to do the best work and then always try to think about how to help people. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and visit your office. Um, I think Good Notes is a remarkable brand, but I think what's even more remarkable but sort of symbolic with it is your story too. And I think um, hopefully this interview can take your story and share it with the world and show that you know, behind the brand of Good Notes are real human beings who are doing real and meaningful things in the world. Thank you for coming to London and, and having this interview with me. Thank you, Samuel. Okay.